wouldn't normally see me in an SUV, at least not for a piston heads video. But this SUV is a VW Touareg R. It was made by the same people who gave us the Golf R. And that might just mean it's worthy of our attention. Not convinced? Well, consider this. With 462 horsepower, the Touareg R is the most powerful R-badged Volkswagen yet. It's also VW's first R model to use an electrified powertrain. The 3.0-litre turbocharged V6 is backed up by a 136 horsepower electric motor. It's a plug-in hybrid with an electric-only range of 28 miles. It'll hit 62 miles per hour in 5.1 seconds. It starts at 72,000 pounds. Question is, what's the Touareg R actually like to drive? Honestly, it's sort of fine. It's quite comfy. It's quite fast. It's quite grippy. But it's unspectacular, unremarkable. In comfort mode, it's got a pretty supple ride and the hybrid powertrain is quite subdued. And then you stick it into sport mode, and given that it's an R, you sort of expect it to be pretty good to drive, don't you? It goes like an R. It's got the performance of an R. It really does clip along the road quite quickly. Although this hybrid powertrain, it doesn't sound great. The petrol engine is quite muted, quite thrashy really. But it's only in the way that this car goes in a straight line that it feels like an R. Around corners, it's not very R-like at all. You get tons of body roll. The steering goes all glassy and vague and you don't really have a sense of how much grip there is at the front axle. Body control is only okay. There's good grip but not bucket loads of the stuff. This Touareg R, it's a nice enough way of getting around the place. You'd like to use one as your everyday car, but as a performance car, as a car with an R badge on the back, no, it doesn't really do it for me. So the Touareg R isn't lightning fast or astonishingly agile or particularly characterful. It's just sort of fine very middle of the road. It all makes me think, if you're going to spend a small fortune on a performance SUV, you should really just go all in. If you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly. Now this is a performance SUV. It's the unmissable Alpina XB7. Enormous, shiny grill and all. A real brick of a car, isn't it? It has a sumptuous cabin, seating for seven, and more important than any of that, a 621 horsepower twin turbo V8. No plug-in hybrid powertrain here. Remarkably, it'll hit 62 miles per hour in 4.2 seconds, despite weighing 2.7 tons. It's littered with clever chassis technology like air suspension, four-wheel steering and active anti-roll bars. It also has a limited slip differential in the rear axle. The price? Around £130,000. With options, you're looking at twice the price of the Touareg R. Ouch. Now we're talking. When you think of a performance SUV, this, surely, is what comes to mind. This thing is a monster. Some cars feel so in tune with the spirit of the day. They just feel so relevant. This isn't one of those. It's enormous and it feels huge. When you look over your shoulder and you see how much car is behind you, you feel like a ferry captain. There's no hybrid assistance here. It's just a 4.4 litre bi-turbo V8 with way more than 600 horsepower and it goes like stink. You expect the soundtrack to be deep and rumbly and bassy like thunder. And actually it sounds pretty good, but it's a more, it's a slightly higher pitch kind of V8 sound. It's actually 
alarmingly quick. You put your foot down and it shoots off and it just keeps on pulling. It's a monster engine. Really though, the most impressive thing about this car is the chassis and how well it goes down a road. It's so freakishly capable. Given how much bigger it is than that VW, I'm amazed at how much better it is to drive in a sort of spirited way. It's night and day. Where the Touareg R has got really vague remote steering, this Alpina has got pin sharp steering. It's so intuitive, you just trust the front axle implicitly from the first mile onwards. And where the VW rolls and flops about in corners, this Alpina just doesn't. This car is packed full of clever chassis technology. You've got those air springs, which gives the car variable ride height. You've got the active anti-roll bars, which stop it from rolling around in corners. You've got four wheel steering, which makes it just feel much more agile than it is. And at low speeds, that four wheel steering makes it so maneuverable. All of that stuff just makes this car freakishly agile. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be this good to drive along a winding B road, but it is. And then you've got that limited slip differential in the rear axle as well, which helps it get away from corners in a really positive and crisp way. It's deeply impressive how good this thing is to drive. I wasn't expecting that at all. And then when you stick it into comfort or better still, comfort plus, that's the extra comfort setting according to the screen down here. It's got that lovely pillowy cushioned Alpina ride. It's so serene. Even though this car sits on 23 inch wheels. Now to be clear, two and a bit ton, 600 horsepower SUVs are really not my sort of car, but I know some people like them. And this is a very good one. However, there is one thing that I like about this Alpina. It's unapologetic in the way it looks, in how much power it's got, in how it develops that power from a whacking great petrol engine. It's unapologetic. And I just happen to really like that about this Alpina. Is there a lesson to be learned from all of this? I think there is. If you are tempted by a performance SUV, that's fine. Just don't be half-hearted about it. Meanwhile, I'll stick to sports cars, supercars and hot hatches. Thanks very much. Not yet subscribed to the Pistonheads YouTube channel? Now's as good a time as any to tap that subscribe button.